The scan trader leaves the Spanish harbour of Bilbao at 5 a.m. A German ship under Maltese flag. The Polish ship's engineer, Jerzy Korbut, was in touch with his wife shortly before. He expected the worst. My husband called the day before. The ship scared him and he wanted to fly home at his own expense. The captain talked him into doing one more voyage. Something was wrong. Twelve men are on board the scan trader. Four East Indians, five Poles and three Germans. Cargo, cement for sharpness in England. A consignment order with a fixed delivery date. If the ship is late, the shipping company has to pay. The first thought as I heard was... The first thought I had when I heard about it was, it's just a shame we had so little time together. The scan trader is the only ship to leave the harbour this morning. The Marine Weather Service has been warning about a storm in the sea area of Biscay since yesterday evening. Southwest, force nine winds in squalls of 10 to 11, waves eight metres and higher. Captain Elmar Orban has the anchor raised despite the weather. I can't understand why the captain, I mean, I know him, I've sailed with him. I know him as someone who is basically a very responsible person and although he was a bit of a daredevil, but why did he take the risk? Seventeen fifty-five. The English Coast Guard picks up the signal of a life raft on frequency 121.5. But the search plane of the French Navy finds only an empty raft. It is from the scan trader. The ship has disappeared. It must have sunk so quickly that they did not have time to signal for help. At the location of the accident, the Bay of Biscay is 4,000 meters deep. The estimated height of the waves at the time of the accident, 9 to 13 meters. The scan trader is 89 meters long and 26 years old. At four million marks, it is insured for a very high amount. All 12 crew members are declared dead after an unsuccessful search. They include the captain, Elmar Urban from Neumünster, 42 years old. The mate, Holger Clausen from Husum, 44. Hans Günther Kolmsee, chief engineer from Hamburg, 52. Jerzy Korbut, second engineer from Stettin, 52. Kletrus Peris, seaman from Tutikorin, India, 25. Boson Richard Kolovietsky, 40. The telegram was in English. I gave it to the children to read. They are learning English at school. We were excited and thought that Papa was inviting us to the ship. My daughter went to the neighbours because of some of the words. She came back crying. I think the shipping company is responsible. They gave the captain the order to sail. The captain wouldn't have done it himself. There was a lot of money involved. Lübeck, headquarters of the Heinrich Beutler shipping company. At the time of the accident, they were operating eight other ships, in addition to the scan trader, and also the Viking shipping agency. Heinrich Beutler, the head of the Beutler Shipping Company. After working as a captain for several years, he bought his first ship in 1964 and built up a family business in which his wife, Helga, and his sons, Henning and Heiner, are also partners. Contacting Heinrich Beutler. Heinrich Beutler gesprochen. He is not willing to be interviewed. He says he has suffered a long time because of the death of the 12 seamen and I don't understand why the captain put out to sea. 
An interview? No, these things should not be made public. And we didn't have anything to do with the scan trader anyway. It belonged to Helga Shipping in Malta. But Helga Shipping exists only on paper. According to the Maltese Register of Companies, 99% of the mailbox company belongs to SK Shipping Hamburg. Managers, Jerzy Kulakowski and Beutler's son, Heiner. 1% of Helga Shipping belongs to Heinrich Beutler himself. But who's behind SK Shipping in Hamburg? According to the Register of Companies, at the time of the accident, the Beutler family owned 100%. Heinrich Beutler flagged out the scan trader to Malta to avoid paying taxes and social security for the crew. And Malta does not have a maritime court of inquiry. Accidents are not investigated. In Germany, in the summer of 1990, the maritime court of inquiry in Emden came to the decision that the shipping company was responsible for the overloading and therefore possibly for the sinking of the ship. Three years later, on September the 1st, 1993, the Higher Maritime Court of Inquiry in Hamburg overturned the decision after conferring with the Ministry of Transport in Bonn. According to the Maritime Court of Inquiry, maritime accident investigative law does not apply to German ships sailing under foreign flags. Bodo Schwarzenberg was chairman of the proceedings. We are not the world police. Our responsibility lies in implementing German law, and that's what we do. And German law states that ships and accidents affecting ships under foreign flag are not to be investigated. Not even if the ships are operating from Germany. This is a unique legal framework worldwide which relieves the shipping company of responsibility for the safety of its ships. It does not have to worry about an investigation in Malta or Germany. The families of the dead seamen have no right to an inquiry. Searching for clues in Bilbao, the location where the scan trader's last voyage began. The pilot, Alejandro Echeita, was the last person to see the crew alive. According to international maritime law, he should have checked whether the ship had been loaded correctly, that is, with a maximum of 2,200 tonnes of cement. It was dark when the ship started, and I couldn't see the load line mark, and anyway, she was below the key wall. But a ship has two sides. Yes, but I couldn't see the other side at all. But when you left the ship as it set out... The waves were already so high that it was impossible to see anything. At the Argaray shipping agency, they organised the loading of the scan trader. The manager, Arata, is dismissive. I don't know if the ship was overloaded. The court has to decide that. It's not my business. You were responsible. No, no. Maybe the shipper or the pilot, ask them. We only did the papers and nothing else. The captain alone is responsible for how much cargo he takes. A witness is willing to talk to us. He says the ship had more than the permissible 2,200 tons on board. It was a lot more, exactly 2,363 tons. How do you know? I was there. Each of the lorries with cement was weighed exactly. It's an exact count. Who is responsible for overloading? The German shipping company. How do you know that? I have written proof. This is a telegram sent from SK Schiffart to the Agarai agency before the ship arrived. Date, 26th January 1990. It says, the scan trader's arrival in Bilbao will be delayed due to bad weather. The ship must therefore carry 2,400 tons. This is an order to overload. 
This document and others were also sent to Germany. Oh. A German policeman was here and took them with him. Hamburg Transatlantic Harbour. We locate the official of the Hamburg Harbour Police. He is an expert for accidents with ships sailing under foreign flags. Superintendent Heiko Eichmeier confirms that he was in Bilbao under the auspices of the Hamburg Public Prosecutor's Office, which is investigating parallel to the Maritime Court. The hearings and the shipping documents handed over to us show that the ship was actually loaded with more than it is allowed to have on board when it left Bilbao. Was this evidence also presented to the Higher Maritime Court of Inquiry before it reached a decision? Yes. But the chairman of the Maritime Court, Bodo Schwarzenberg, deemed it unnecessary to present the explosive evidence to the other members of the court. Yes, I gave the other members a brief summary of these things. So the other members did not read them? Not in detail, certainly not. Why not? This was a decisive investigation. The whole package in Spanish? We would have had to postpone the hearings again and have everything officially translated. But we are talking about the lives of 12 men. No, we're supposed to decide whether the investigation should be continued or not. And if the conclusion is no, then we had to reach the decision we reached. I don't understand why you kept this information secret, just because you wanted to save translation costs. It wasn't worth it, in my opinion. Despite conclusive evidence of guilt, no charges were brought against the shipping company and witnesses who are willing to give testimony were not even questioned. At the Polish port of Stettin, the Baltica has just been moored at the repair yard. On board we find the captain, Marian Konarski. He was also captain on the scan trader and admits to having overloaded the ship at the orders of the shipping company. How does it work? Does Mr. Beutler call you up and say load... Yes, it has already been ordered. It's already ordered before I arrive at the port. The agent comes and says, I've ordered so and so much cargo and you have to take it. Usually I want to say, no, I won't take it. But that would be my last voyage. Mm. We search for other witnesses. We meet Gustav Krawczynski at the memorial to Polish seamen lost at sea in the central cemetery in Stettin. He shows us the memorial plaque with the names of the Polish crew members of the scan trader. Beutler fired Krawczynski because he refused to overload the scan trader with 300 tons of cement. Because I didn't want to overload the ship, they got rid of me. I was fired. His dismissal papers. I would like to confirm that we definitely need a new captain for MVO's country as soon as possible. After different problems with him during the last weeks, he now refused to load all the cargo, which was ordered through. We don't have objection when master is an older one, if he only is strong in mind. Please try your best, Heiner Beutler. I was not surprised because I expected that will be happen earlier or later. Do you expect it? Yes. Because it was so hard pressing from the owner side to load more cargo. Lübeck. We find Heinrich Beutler at his ship, Semking. We think it is important for you to make a statement on the deaths of the 12 sailors. We've spoken with their families. 
How does it feel to have 12 men on your conscience? Don't insult me. The shipping company has no comment. You're worse than I thought. Would you please comment? How do you make peace with your conscience, Mr. Beutler? April 1990, two months after the scan trader went down. A telex is received by Heinrich Beutler from Tutikorin in southern India. Please inform immediately whereabouts of son, Kletros Pieris, at ship scan trader. The Indian family had not even been informed of the accident. In Tutikorin with Kletros' brother. He says Beutler never responded to the telex. Just for the sake of his family, he stopped his studies, you know, you understand that? He stopped his studies, he went for a job. And as a boy, he was working in a spinning mill. And uh, he earned a good name in the mill also, and he slowly raised up himself. And he was working well there. But that's, that was not enough for to run the family. And these two sisters are to be married. And only we thought of sending him as a shipman, so then only we sent him out. That was the tragedy, that was the mistake we have done. He was totally shattered, that much I can tell you, because he, he loved him so much. He, he, he was the eldest son in the family, and uh, she fell ill afterwards. She just after three months, she expired. Just imagine how what would be the effect Bombay. This is where Kletos Paris fell into the hands of a recruiting agency which falsifies Siemens papers for unemployed Indians and sells them to foreign shipping companies for starvation wages. We look for Inder Pal Singh. His company, Express Marine, supplied Heinrich Beutler with Indians. If I am connected to anybody, anything, and since the seamen were there on the scan trader, which sank in the Bay of Biscay, naturally on hearing the news, I felt very sad because for them, for the families, for everybody. Mm. You are a religious man? Yes, I'm a very God-fearing man. You can see, I believe in God. Cleitra signed this contract before flying to Germany that I shall not accept my salary for the first six months that I shall serve on the ship. I undertake that I shall not escape from the vessel illegally. I undertake to take any food that may be served on the vessel and will not participate in any union activities. Signed, Cletus Pires. It is his declaration. He is the best man who can say. And he's, at present he's not alive. Mm. So it is better to ask him who told him? Mm. But uh, there are other seafarers uh, which worked with, with the Beutler company and other ships with the same contracts, and they told me that you, um, Mr. Paul Singh, forced them to sign this Nobody declaration. Nobody can force anybody to sign a paper before the magistrate and notaries. And that they had paid to, had paid to you $1,000 to be sent to Germany. It is wrong. It is absolutely lie. How many, how much they had to pay? I have not, we have not received any money from anybody. But it's a form of slavery trade. I, I do not know it is a slavery or anything. It is not my, it doesn't concern me. The man has purchased this and he has, he has signed it. But it's a slave trade trade. I do not know anything about this. You sold them to Germany. I have not sold them. I don't want to answer your any question. Finish. If you, you start asking... You are the Ariatids. They are Indians like you. You are asking irrelevant questions. A few streets away. This is where Inder Pal Singh recruits unemployed men from the provinces who live together while waiting for jobs. One of these men is Antonio Fernandez. He worked on the scan trader's sister ship, the Vineta. After having complained to Beutler about beatings he received from the captain, he was put on land at the Kiel Canal without warning and without a penny. He had signed the same slave contract as Petros Peris. 
I had signed the contract, but I had not re read the this thing contract. But why did you sign without reading? Because it was given to us to sign when we were about to go to the airport, last minute. And what did they say? In, we didn't read because we didn't have the time to read all this. But he what did Indapal Singh explain to you? What is he, the... he didn't explain anything. He said this is the agreement. He just said it is an agreement. He didn't allow, means he didn't mm -hmm. give us the time to read. He said there's no time to read and all. I like the ship, but the captain was not good. He was manhandling. He came to hit me so many times. Once he banged my head on my on the this thing, door. On the way to Darawi, the largest slum in Bombay. We have heard from the Seamen's Union that families of the Indian sailors did not receive the accident insurance taken out for them. 100,000 Deutschmarks per family. Beutler pocketed the money himself. Okay. Abdul Ghani from the Indian Seamen's Union takes us to the family of Premji Vadel, deck man on the scan trader. Premji Vardell left behind six children. His widow makes ends meet for the family with pottery work. She confirms that she has not seen a penny of the insurance. They must have the right to represent you, then they could act. It's not sufficient. Indapal Singh said in April 1990, don't worry about a thing. The shipping company will send the money within 20 days. But nothing ever came. Then later he said, well then, you'll have to live by the grace of God. Mrs. Vardell is still paying off the commission to the slave trader who found her husband the job. The son says, I've lost my father. Tell the shipping company that it should send a little money so that I can learn a trade. Back in Lübeck. The Winterthur Insurance Agency gave the money to the shipping company to pass on to the families. Beutler paid the German families immediately, the Polish ones a year later, and the Indians never saw a penny. 400,000 Deutschmarks in extra profit, not including the interest. What really happened on the scan trader? We know that the ship was overloaded, but that alone does not explain why it went down. The shipping company says that an enormous wave swallowed the ship. Just sailors' bad luck? Or was the catastrophe foreseeable? Kurt Tauber, ship's engineer and technical inspector for Beutler Shipping Company for several years. I was really upset, to be honest, because I knew back then I had to overhaul the engine. I was supposed to go along on that voyage and I was supposed to overhaul both engines of the auxiliary diesel, starboard and port engines, and I knew they weren't OK. What exactly was your assessment of the technical condition of the scan trader before it sank? Well, the compressors. Maybe you could show us on the photograph? I made pictures of the scan trader myself. These were the compressors. Here are the bolts, they weren't really tight. I mean, they were beyond repair. Salt water pipes. You took pictures of them too? Yes, I have some of the salt water pipes too. They were wrapped like someone in a plaster cast, as if you put someone's leg in a cast. And those are salt water pipes for the cooling system, which is absolutely impossible. What can happen if the water leaks out? You could try to patch them, but if it happens at night, and you don't notice it. The men aren't always down below and it can fill up very fast. The engine can fill up. Or it can spray onto the generator or somewhere else and then everything stops, then it's all over. You, as the technical inspector, were also responsible for the technical condition of the Beutler fleet. What did you do with the information? I showed Beutler the photos at that time. A Heinrich Beutler. Yes, that's right. And he said, well, it's not necessary. We'll see. We'll do it next time. Or it'll be back here soon and we'll do it then. But it was never done. Beutler sent out the scan trader with broken salt water pipes, with engines that were constantly stalling, 
with air compressors where the bolts were broken and refused to have them repaired. Where were all these statements before? Where are they? Where were they at the Maritime Court of Inquiry? Why do people always turn up later who never want to show themselves? Then there's a lot of talk. Well, we haven't heard, seen or read anything about it. That's interesting, isn't it? I've never seen anything like it, really, either official or anywhere else in the files. From where it is? From employees of the Beutler Shipping Company who don't think the lives of 12 men should just be forgotten like that. And why weren't these photographs, for example, submitted to the Maritime Court? Well, they didn't come to us on their own either. We went to the people. Why didn't you? No, no, no. It's not like that. You can't do that. Witnesses say that two weeks before the accident, a hole was torn in the ship when it touched bottom. 20 tonnes of incoming water had to be pumped out per hour. The pumps probably give out because of the rough seas. The ship lists and turns sideways on. Due to the sloping structure of the cement tanks, the cargo and therefore the ship's centre of gravity are very high. With the 220 tonnes of overload, it is even more unstable. It capsizes when hit by the rolling sea. One thing is certain, that because the proceedings in Hamburg didn't take place, it will be impossible to find out the real reason for the accident with the ship. This can, of course, encourage other shipping companies to register a ship, as in this case in Malta, because they know that country doesn't have a maritime court and there is no possibility of carrying out investigations. They now know that if someday a ship sinks, for whatever reason, maybe due to overloading or poor safety conditions, they don't have to worry about investigative proceedings. These ships don't sink every day. If you investigate one case more, say every 10 years, what difference does it make? Does it change the course of world history? It doesn't change a thing. The go-ahead for a death ship. We are tipped off and fly to Norway. Beutler's smallest ship, the Sem King, is anchored in the private harbour of the cement factory in Breivik. Heinrich Beutler bought the Sem King from a salvage wharf for 500,000 Deutschmarks. It's going to be loaded with cement for Rostock. The next morning, we board the ship with the inspector from the International Transport Workers' Federation, ITF. Niels Petersen wants to check the wages paid on the Sem King. He informs us that the Russian and Polish sailors on board are being cheated out of part of their wages. They sign receipts for wages which they have not received because they are afraid of being fired. The ITF was able to get $135,000 in back wages for the previous crew by threatening to boycott Beutler's ship. But the newly hired crew is too scared to trust the ITF inspector. Captain Lothar Frank from Rostock invites us in. According to the accounts, no one has worked overtime. According to the captain's records, everyone has received the internationally accepted minimum wage. So last month, one sailor earned almost 3,000 marks, another over 3,000. These wages reflect the ITF scale. Fast 3,000 mark. The one with also over 3,000 mark. So that's the overstood. That's the Gehälter, die so laut ITF Tarif zu bekommen haben. According to ITF. And how much did they really get? No, no. This is according to regulations, and everyone signed a receipt for his wages. I'm not playing your games. There have been no crooked deals. You can see from the pay slips here that everyone signed. I've been seeing the master, and I've been looking at the overtime sheets. You don't work very much. Only eight hours? Yeah, it's not like... It's okay, though. Is it okay? Yeah? Yeah. Are you receiving your money? Yeah. yeah. Yes? 
Later, in private, the sailors tell us they have received only half of the wages stipulated in the contract and that they have received absolutely no money in the last two months. They were forbidden to speak to the ITF union. They feel powerless. They cannot take their case to the German courts either because there is a flag of convenience, this time from Antigua Barbados, flying from the stern of the ship. To prevent a ship from setting out overloaded, it has to have a load line mark on the ship's side. It's winter now, so the W line, as in winter, counts. According to international law, it must always be above the water line. We watch the Sem King being loaded from the opposite shore. The load line mark disappears. We call the cement factory. We learn that Beutler ordered 1,100 tons of cement, which have been loaded. 150 tons too much, a life-threatening situation for the crew. The next morning at six o'clock, the Sem King casts off. There are no harbour police to check the load line mark. At Kattegat, the Sem King runs into a storm with four seven winds. The ship arrives late at Rostock after 45 hours. Although it used five tons of fuel underway, it still lies just as low in the water as in Breivik. The reason? Water has seeped in everywhere because the bulkheads and hatches are not watertight. In two hours after a sleepless crossing, the crew starts the next shift, discharging cement. In the engine room, the Sem King has barely anchored when the generators give out blackout because the fuel has run out. Rusty valves, leaky pipes, just like the scan trader. The crew calls the same king the floating coffin. One of its main generators has burnt out and the vitally necessary ballast tanks cannot be used because they are not tight. But the ship's safety documents are in order. The same night, we meet one of the sailors. He says... We set out with only five tons of fuel. Captain Frank wanted to anchor at Copenhagen to fuel because of the delay. Henning Beutler forbade him to do so by phone. He said, it's too expensive. You have to make do with what you have. And Captain Frank obeyed. Thank God we just barely made it with the fuel. If there'd been a blackout before, we would have been another scan trader. The scan trader's last voyage. The ship was old, overloaded and had technical defects. In addition, there was a hole in the hull and it was constantly taking on water. But even if the ship was therefore listing and was a thwart to the oncoming waves, Captain Urban should have been able to radio for help. Why did the ship sink so fast? Why was there no opportunity? Urban was known to be experienced but dependent on the shipping company because it let him work with a purchased Panamanian licence for worldwide trade. Then, one week before the accident, the company sent him a sick mate, Holger Clausen. He had lost his licence because he was seriously ill emotionally. We are able to locate the fatal mistake with the help of marine experts. Because of the special structure of the scan trader with its high centre of gravity due to a high load, the third and fourth ballast tanks always have to be filled with water so that the ship does not capsize when the waves come from the side. But Captain Urban sailed without stabilising ballast and instead loaded 220 additional tonnes of cement. A cross section. With ballast, the ship is relatively stable in the water. Without ballast and with an overload, it capsizes at an angle of inclination of only 20 to 25 degrees. The scan trader had no chance. Its loss was pre-programmed. If it's overloaded and the engines break down and there's a blackout, then it happens within a minute. Then they have no chance to get out. Because by the time they notice for the first time that the ship is rolling too far and they get a scare and want to get out, then it's too late. They can't get out, it's impossible. Because the roll periods get shorter and shorter, and at the third roll period it turns over. 
At the first one, they think it's not that bad. The ship will stabilize again, okay. But now it's really rolling. And then they realize at the second roll period that it's getting worse. And now they're really afraid and want to run up to the deck, but they can't make it because they have trouble just getting out of the bunk and just holding on to something. And when the lights go out, there's no way to get out anymore. The scan traders' safety documents. They require the use of stabilizing water. Why did Captain Urban ignore these regulations? Or did he have falsified papers on board, as one Beutler employee suspects, and sailed unknowingly to his death? All witnesses are dead. All except one. We find him in Stettin. He is the Polish mate who left the scan trader a week before it went down. As the first officer, he was also responsible for the loading. He wants to remain anonymous for fear of losing his new job. We have recreated the conversation with the original text. Everyone was afraid of the ship. We didn't trust it. It was very unstable, and we didn't know why. Did you take on ballast water to improve stability when the ship was loaded? No, not on any voyage. But the stability documents require it. That's new to me. I didn't know anything about that. Have a look. I never saw these documents. They were never on board. So you sailed without stability documents? No, but mine were different, with different counts and stabilization regulations. And the clause requiring 220 tons of stabilizing ballast was missing too. I didn't know anything about it. So you had falsified papers on board? Yes, you could say that. We also show the safety documents to the former captains of the scan trader. Both captains, Kravczynski and Bonk, sailed with falsified papers which they received from the shipping company. They are both shocked by the deception and want to testify in court. Apparently, Captain Urban was deceived with falsified papers about the capsizing behaviour of the scan trader so that he would not be afraid to take on more cargo. This earned the shipping company an extra profit of about 10,000 Deutschmarks per voyage. The death of the crew was part of the calculation. Did Heinrich Beutler also give the orders to put to sea? Captain Urban had to call the shipping company every day. Heinrich Beutler and his son Heiner now claim that no one spoke with Urban during the days before it sailed. He alone made the decision to sail. The atmosphere on board was bad. Captain Urban's and my nerves were particularly on edge always under pressure. We had hardly loaded when the orders came by phone from the shipping company, come on, weigh anchor, don't lose any time, no matter what the weather was like. Did Orban follow orders? If the weather was too poor, he stayed in port. Well, a few times he did set out under pressure from the shipping company, but he was really an experienced and sensible captain who didn't just put our lives at risk. Mm -hmm. But in Bilbao, he sailed despite the hurricane and despite the overload. Yes, I didn't understand that either. He must have been under tremendous pressure from the ship owner. Well, I can imagine that they said to Orban, you're supposed to be in England on such and such a day and you have to be there. ship was already three days late when it arrived in Bilbao. Yes, that's right. Just like the Sem King. There they said, you're running late and everything has been ordered. Do you know what all of this costs? That's what they said to the captain, too. And that's how they pressure a captain. But if the captain tells the ship owner that the forecast is for force 12 winds and that it is too dangerous, then the shipping company has to say, OK, then wait until it dies down. I'll tell you what Henning Beutler said about this. It's funny, there's no storm here. 
And that's strange, we have other ships running and they don't have bad weather, only you have bad weather. Yes, that's what he told the captain. Other ships sail and don't have a problem, they don't complain. How come? Well, he said, you should listen to the weather report sometimes. I did, he said, and there's nothing here in Lübeck. But the captain can say, I'm responsible for the lives of 12 people and I'm not going. Yes, he can say that. But most of them don't. Most of them are under a lot of pressure and that means, well, they think about it. When a ship owner says, other ships are sailing, how come you're not? Then he says to himself, damn, am I a captain or not? And then, well, I guess I'll sail anyway. And so he set out. The last attempt at an interview. Mr. Beutler, you knew that the ship wasn't in working order, that it had serious technical defects? You can't just ignore that. Will you stop pestering me? You have 12 lives on your conscience. And you're a real shit. You want to accuse me. I offered to talk to you about it in a civilized manner, Mr. Beutler. The scan trader is no exception. More death ships are sailing the seas today than ever before. 10,000 seamen have drowned in shipping accidents over the last 10 years. Most of them on ships under flags of convenience. Ships like the scan trader. The research for this film has prompted the Hamburg Public Prosecutor's Office to bring charges against Heinrich Beutler, his son Heiner, and his former partner, Jerzy Kulakowski. The charge will be 12 cases of murder. to leave the harbour this morning. The Marine Weather Service has been warning about a storm in the sea area of Biscay since yesterday evening. Southwest, force nine winds in squalls of 10 to 11, waves eight metres and higher. Captain Elmar Orban has the anchor raised despite the weather. I can't understand why the captain I mean, I know him, I've sailed with him. I know him as someone who is basically a very responsible person and although he was a bit of a daredevil, but why did he take the risk? Seventeen fifty-five. The English Coast Guard picks up the signal of a life raft on frequency 121.5. But the search plane of the French Navy finds only an empty raft. It is from the scan trader. The ship has disappeared. It must have sunk so quickly that they did not have time to signal for help. At the location of the accident, the Bay of Biscay is 4,000 meters deep. The estimated height of the waves at the time of the accident, 9 to 13 meters. The scan trader is 89 meters long and 26 years old. At 4 million marks, it is insured for a very high amount a shipping company. At the time of the accident, they were operating eight other ships, in addition to the scan trader, and also the Viking shipping agency. Heinrich Beutler, the head of the Beutler Shipping Company. After working as a captain for several years, he bought his first ship in 1964 and built up a family business in which his wife, Helga, and his sons, Henning and Heiner, are also partners. Contacting Heinrich Beutler. Ich hätte gerne Heinrich Beutler gesprochen. 
Dan Burrow. He is not willing to be interviewed. He says he has suffered a long time because of the death of the 12 seamen and I don't understand why the captain put out to sea. An interview? No, these things should not be made public. And we didn't have anything to do with the scan trader anyway. It belonged to Helga Shipping in Malta. But Helga Shipping exists only on paper. According to the Maltese Register of Companies, 99% of the mailbox company belongs to SK Shipping Hamburg. Managers, Jerzy Kulakowski and Beutler's son, Heiner. 1% of Helga Shipping belongs to Heinrich Beutler himself. But who's behind? All 12 crew members are declared dead after an unsuccessful search. They include the captain, Elmar Urban from Neumünster, 42 years old. The mate, Holger Clausen from Husum, 44. Hans Günther Kolmsee, chief engineer from Hamburg, 52. Jerzy Korbut, second engineer from Stettin, 52. Kletrus Peris, seaman from Tutikorin, India, 25. Boson Richard Kolovietsky, 40. The telegram was in English. I gave it to the children to read. They are learning English at school. We were excited and thought that Papa was inviting us to the ship. My daughter went to the neighbours because of some of the words. She came back crying. I think the shipping company is responsible. They gave the captain the order to sail. The captain wouldn't have done it himself. There was a lot of money involved. Lübeck, headquarters of the Heinrich Beutler and SK shipping in Hamburg. According to the Register of Companies, at the time of the accident, the Beutler family owned 100%. Heinrich Beutler flagged out the scan trader to Malta to avoid paying taxes and social security for the crew. And Malta does not have a maritime court of inquiry. Accidents are not investigated. In Germany, in the summer of 1990, the maritime court of inquiry in Emden came to the decision that the shipping company was responsible for the overloading and therefore possibly for the sinking of the ship. Three years later, on September the 1st, 1993, the Higher Maritime Court of Inquiry in Hamburg overturned the decision after conferring with the Ministry of Transport in Bonn. According to the Maritime Court of Inquiry, maritime accident investigative law does not apply to German ships sailing under foreign flags. Bodo Schwarzenberg was chairman of the proceedings. We are not the world police. Our responsibility lies in implementing German law, and that's what we do. And German law states that ships and accidents affecting ships under foreign flag are not to be investigated. Not even if the ships are operating. The scan trader leaves the Spanish harbour of Bilbao at 5 a.m., a German ship under Maltese flag. The Polish ship's engineer, Jerzy Korbut, was in touch with his wife shortly before. He expected the worst. My husband called the day before. The ship scared him and he wanted to fly home at his own expense. The captain talked him into doing one more voyage. Something was wrong. Twelve men are on board the scan trader. Four East Indians, five Poles and three Germans. Cargo, cement for sharpness in England. A consignment order with a fixed delivery date. If the ship is late, the shipping company has to pay. The first thing I heard was 
The first thought I had when I heard about it was, it's just a shame we had so little time together. The scan trader is the only...